In 1995, Elena Monroe and her diving partner, Dr. Ethan Sawyer, were preparing to embark on another adventure while on Haven Isle. It was a bright and sunny morning. Their objective was to investigate the migration routes taken by great white sharks. Haven Isle proved to be an ideal location for this kind of investigation. Elena and Ethan were trailblazers in marine biology, and their enthusiasm for the water had no bounds. As they dropped into the glistening waters on their yacht, the world's splendor under the surface gradually revealed itself to them. While beautiful rays floated effortlessly through the currents, schools of brilliantly colored fish rushed about the coral reefs. But on this particular day, Elena noticed something unusual that drew her attention. A vast shadow was seen gliding gently across the depths of the room. Although it appeared to be a great white shark, there was something unusual about it. Elena had never seen anything like the markings on the animal's back before. The enigma of this creature so enthralled Elena that she decided to mark it for later investigation. Elena's stomach began to flip as she got closer to the shark, and she experienced a tingling sensation of exhilaration mixed with anxiety. It gave off the impression of being interested yet wary simultaneously, as though it knew she was there for more than mere observation. She proceeded to affix the tracking device to the shark's fin in an organized manner. She was unaware that the shark was uncomfortable while the tag was attached. In a matter of seconds, the peaceful environment of the undersea world erupted into mayhem. Elena and Ethan were in the path of the shark's oncoming charge when it became belligerent and began to thrash its gigantic body. Even though they could return to the research yacht in time, the experience perplexed them. This was not the typical behavior of a shark. Elena and Ethan studied the data from the tag once they had returned to the yacht. The distinctive markings on the shark allowed the researchers to determine that it was the same individual that they had seen five years before. However, it had grown to a monster size since then. The data also showed that the shark was in agony. They suggested that the shark's aggressive behavior was a reaction to the injury produced by the tagging procedure. As they deliberated on what course of action to take, word arrived on the island of a shark attack. The tourists quickly panicked and the locals became concerned about their well-being. The experienced sailor in charge of the Atlantis Explorer, Captain Marcus Fletcher, volunteered to assist the people doing the research. The squad needed to rush to protect the people who lived on the island. Elena, Ethan, Captain Fletcher, and Mia, a young reporter covering the trip who was known for her daring and adventurous spirit, came together to formulate a strategy. They had to devise a plan to coax the hostile shark away from the populated regions and back into the open waters where it belonged. The crew used improved technology and materials to create a realistic-looking decoy, hoping to attract the shark and cause it to swim away from the island. Mia offered to play the decoy role because of her extensive knowledge of marine life, making her the ideal choice for the job. The crew quickly implemented their strategy while it was still dark outside. While Mia courageously took her place in the water, the others maintained a tight check on the tracking data to keep track of the shark's movements. The shark followed the decoy as it made its slow journey away from the island where it had been placed. The team watched with bated breath as the shark got fixated on the decoy, becoming oblivious to its surroundings. Elena and Ethan turned on the tracking device as soon as they entered deeper water. This allowed them to observe the shark's activity while remaining at a safe distance. They were taken aback when they saw a change in the manner in which the shark was behaving. It had rediscovered some dormant instinct since it became less aggressive and more interested. It moved fluidly through the open sea, its muscular physique sliding through the water currents. The results of the group's labor were satisfactory. The shark had successfully navigated safely back to its natural home from human habitation. Elena and Ethan felt relieved when they realized they had saved the islanders' lives and brought the shark some tranquility. The crew of the Atlantis Explorer gathered around on its deck as the sun began to rise on a new day to discuss the incredible journey they had just completed. Mia documented the entirety of the trip on film and is now prepared to reveal this wild tale to the world. In the days that followed, word of the mysterious shark and the brave squad that fought it and preserve their island quickly went worldwide. Elena, Ethan, Captain Fletcher, and Mia 
came to be regarded as heroes because their stories encouraged others to value and preserve the ocean's natural beauty. The event had a significant and long-lasting effect on each squad member. Elena and Ethan's dedication to their studies increased, and they prioritized safeguarding marine life and maintaining the integrity of delicate ecosystems. On Haven Isle, Captain Fletcher persevered to encourage environmentally conscious vacationing and conservation work. And as she shed light on the secrets of the natural world, Mia's passion for storytelling grew even stronger. Those who witnessed Elena Monroe and the majestic shark have their memory permanently marked by the mystery surrounding them. Because of this, the wild tale of the shark that had eaten a woman who had jumped off her yacht took an unexpected turn, evolving into a compelling narrative about compassion, understanding, and the unbreakable relationship between humans and the wild. Nancy Clark had spent her entire life in the tight-knit coastal community of Ambota Bay, North California. It was a place where the salty breeze intertwined with the essence of hard work, resilience, and an enduring connection to the sea. Her family's legacy was deeply rooted in the art of fishing. Her father, a seasoned fisherman, had passed away when she was just a child, leaving her in the care of her uncle, Robert Clark, who was also a man of the sea. As the sun broke through the horizon each morning, casting its gentle glow upon the tranquil bay, Nancy could be found by the shoreline, her eyes fixed on the endless expanse of the ocean. Her heart swelled with a profound love for the sea. With her uncle Robert, she found a mentor and protector. He had taken her under his wing after her father's passing, teaching her the ways of the ocean and the art of fishing. Together they formed a team, a familial bond forged by the relentless tides of Ambota Bay. One clear summer morning as the first light kissed the bay's waters, Nancy stood on the dock beside her uncle watching the serenade, their trusty fishing boat sway gently with the tide. It was a small vessel, worn by years of hard work and unforgiving elements, but it symbolized their livelihood and the legacy they carried forward. Robert and Nancy prepared the serenade for a day of fishing on the open ocean. The nets were carefully inspected, the bait secured, and the weathered charts unfolded to guide them to the most promising fishing grounds. The gulls overhead called out as if sharing in anticipation of the day's catch. They pushed the boat away from the dock, the water beneath them welcoming the serenade's graceful entry. Nancy took her place beside her uncle, her eyes scanning the horizon for any signs of movement in the water. The gentle rocking of the boat beneath her feet was soothing, a sensation she had come to cherish. As they ventured farther from the sheltered bay and into the vast expanse of the open ocean, a sense of excitement and trepidation coursed through Nancy's veins. The sea was unpredictable, its moods ever-changing, and she had learned to respect its power. Their journey had been uneventful, the morning sun warming their backs as they did their tasks. The rhythmic sounds of the boat's engine and the creaking of the wooden deck beneath their feet formed a symphony of familiarity. They cast their nets into the water, patiently waiting for their haul. However, on this day, the sea had other plans. Without warning, a shadowy form materialized beneath the surface, a dark silhouette that seemed to defy the boundaries of nature. A sense of foreboding washed over Nancy as she witnessed the massive shape, unmistakably that of a great white shark. The shark's arrival was abrupt, sending shockwaves through the serenade. It approached with a speed and determination that left no room for escape. Panic gripped Nancy and Robert as the enormous predator surged towards them. In an instant, the great white shark collided with the serenade, its colossal bulk slamming into the small boat. The impact was deafening, with wood splintering and the ship tilting dangerously to one side. Nancy and her uncle were thrown off balance, their world descending into chaos. But amidst the turmoil and terror, fate offered them an unlikely reprieve. The shark, perhaps disoriented by the collision, veered away from the boat just as swiftly as it had attacked. It disappeared back into the ocean's depths, leaving behind only the ripples of its presence. As Nancy and Robert clung to the battered vessel, their hearts pounding and breaths ragged, they realized they had narrowly escaped the jaws of death. The serenade bore the scars of the encounter, showing signs of damage from the shark's forceful assault. However, miraculously, they remained unharmed. With trembling hands, they assessed the damage to the boat. 
It had been a close call, a confrontation with nature's apex predator that had tested their mettle and resolve. The sea had delivered its warning, a reminder of the delicate balance between humans and the untamed world beneath the waves. Nancy and Robert knew they had been granted a second chance, a testament to their shared love for the sea and their unwavering bond as family and fishermen. With their hearts heavy with both fear and gratitude, they decided to return to Amboda Bay, their trusty serenade carrying them back to the safety of their beloved shores. The ocean's vastness stretched as they navigated the journey home, reminding them of the mysteries beneath its surface. The experience had left an indelible mark on Nancy's soul, a profound respect for the sea's untamed beauty and unforgiving power. In Amboda Bay, where the salty breeze continued to whisper its tales of triumph and tribulation, Nancy and Robert Clark would remember that fateful encounter with the great white shark with them forever. It was a stark reminder that in the realm of the sea, survival was a delicate dance, one where humans were mere guests in a world governed by forces far beyond their control. Jake, a seasoned deep sea diver from San Francisco, California, had always dreamed of diving in the breathtaking tropical waters of Honolulu, Hawaii. In the summer of 2001, he finally had the chance to fulfill this long-awaited goal. Excitement filled his heart as he packed his bags and embarked on his journey to the paradise of Honolulu. As Jake set foot on the captivating beaches of Honolulu, he couldn't contain his awe. The beaches stretched out in all their glory, adorned with powdery white sand that shimmered under the warm sun. Crystal clear turquoise waters gently lapped against the shore, inviting Jake to explore their hidden depths. After a night of revelry with the locals, Jake, despite nursing a hangover, decided it was time to venture into the waters. Clad in a black wetsuit, equipped with a bright yellow oxygen tank and essential diving gear, he was ready to immerse himself in the wonders beneath the surface. Renting a boat and enlisting the help of a guide, Jake was led to the finest diving spots. The boat anchored in the middle of the ocean, and with a nod from the guide, Jake wasted no time diving into the azure waters. Jake was greeted by a mesmerizing underwater world as he descended into the depths. The coral reefs were like vibrant underwater gardens, alive with an explosion of colors and teeming with an array of marine life. Schools of tropical fish darted around him, their vibrant hues illuminating the water with their elegance. An hour into his dive, while Jake marveled at the beauty surrounding him, a sudden movement caught his attention. A dark silhouette of a massive creature appeared in his peripheral vision. Curious, Jake turned to investigate, but there was nothing suspicious to be seen. Dismissing it as a figment of his imagination, he continued his exploration, unaware of the sinister presence lurking nearby. As Jake began his ascent toward the surface, little did he know that his silhouette resembled that of a seal, unwittingly attracting the attention of a stealthy predator. With lightning speed and deadly precision, a 15-foot tiger shark emerged from the depths, racing toward its unsuspecting prey. In an instant, the predator lunged at its prey, a wave of excruciating pain surged through Jake's abdomen, leaving him gasping for air as his lungs were cruelly deprived of oxygen. The forceful impact ripped through every fiber of his being, shaking him to the core. As the searing pain intensified, he became acutely aware of the relentless assault on his abdomen, feeling the flesh torn apart by the vicious creature that had mercilessly attacked him. As Jake's consciousness slowly returned, a surge of horror flooded his senses, his gaze meeting the piercing eyes of the tiger shark. The sight of the massive predator, its jaws clamped around his body, sent shivers down his spine. Blood seeped from the deep wounds, painting the water red. Driven by primal instinct and adrenaline, Jake summoned every ounce of strength within him. With a flurry of determined blows, he hammered the predator's snout with unyielding force, hoping against hope to break free from its deadly grip. Yet the shark's thrashing movements only intensified the pain, each violent motion tearing apart Jake's flesh. 
His screams for help disappeared into the depths, swallowed by the unforgiving waters. The agony was unbearable, but Jake refused to surrender to his grim fate. Fueled by adrenaline, he relentlessly struck back, punching, kicking, and clawing at the shark, even as the movement sent shock waves of torment through his own body. Jake's hand reached the shark's vulnerable eye in a desperate bid for survival. Gripping onto the creature's eye socket with all his strength, he clung on tenaciously, unwilling to let go. The shark recoiled in pain, loosening its grip on Jake's abdomen, providing a brief window of respite. Summoning every ounce of courage and enduring unimaginable pain, Jake wriggled out of the shark's jaws, his flesh sliced and mangled in the process. With his remaining strength, he delivered a powerful kick to the shark's snout, propelling himself upward as the wounded predator retreated into the abyss. Jake's journey to the surface was a grueling battle against his injuries. Each stroke through the water left behind a trail of blood and agony, but his determination to survive spurred him onward. When he finally broke through the surface, his hoarse and raspy voice cried out for help, and his guide, attuned to his distress, quickly came to his aid. He was hauled aboard the boat, his body battered and broken with flesh and organs exposed from the shark's brutal assault. Time became a race against death as paramedics tended to his wounds. Their expertise and swift actions gave him a fighting chance. Urgently, Jake was rushed to the beach and then transported to the hospital, where a skilled team of medical professionals worked tirelessly to save his life. Despite the severity of his injuries, luck was on Jake's side. Through weeks of intensive care and unwavering determination, he gradually healed. After a month-long struggle, he triumphantly emerged from the hospital, forever marked by his harrowing encounter with the tiger shark. He was determined to embrace life with renewed gratitude and resilience. In the chilly waters of Gansby, South Africa, known as the great white shark capital of the world, Dr. Anna Richardson prepared for a day that would mark a significant milestone in her career as a marine biologist. Her focus was on the intricate behavior patterns of great white sharks, and today's dive was to observe them up close to the safety of a shark cage. With keen eyes and a spirit undeterred by the dangers of the deep, Anna had spent years studying these majestic predators. Her work aimed to debunk myths surrounding sharks and to promote their conservation. The dive operation she joined was renowned for its commitment to safety and respect for marine life, making it the perfect partner for her research. As the boat reached the dive site, the crew began their preparations, lowering the sturdy cage into the water. Clad in her wetsuit and equipped with underwater cameras and sensors, Anna reviewed her checklist one last time. Her heart raced with anticipation from the prospect of coming face to face with the sharks and the opportunity to contribute valuable insights to marine science. The crew briefed her on the safety protocols, emphasizing the strength and reliability of the cage. The cage bars were made from high-grade steel, designed to withstand a great white shark's powerful jaws and brute strength. Anna nodded, her confidence bolstered by the crew's professionalism and the robustness of the cage. As the cage was secured, Anna descended into the water, the cold ocean enveloping her. Below, the underwater world was a murky expanse, visibility limited but sufficient for her purposes. She could make out the shadows of the marine life that called these waters home, and her anticipation grew. The first few minutes were calm, the only sounds being her breathing and the distant hum of the boat's engine. Anna's eyes adjusted to the dim light, and she began to observe the smaller fish that darted curiously around the cage. Suddenly, a shadow loomed in the distance, its size and shape unmistakable. A great white shark, its mottled gray skin, approached with a grace that belied its fearsome reputation. Anna's breath caught in her throat as she reached for her camera, her hands steady despite the adrenaline coursing through her veins. The shark circled the cage, its eyes seemingly fixated on Anna. She remained still, capturing every detail, from the gills pulsing with each movement to the scars that adorned its skin, each a silent testament to its life in the ocean's depths. As she focused on her work, another shadow appeared, larger and more menacing than the first. 
This shark, drawn by the commotion or perhaps by curiosity, moved with a purpose that sent a chill down Anna's spine. As the second great white shark approached, its size became more apparent, dwarfing the first shark that had initially captured Anna's attention. Its movements were deliberate, each flick of its tail propelling it closer to the cage with an unsettling focus. Anna's heart raced, her previous excitement tinged with a hint of apprehension. She steadied her camera, determined to document every moment, even as the situation grew tense. The shark circled the cage, its massive body casting shadows that danced across the steel bars in Anna's face. It seemed to be studying her, its dark eyes peering into the cage with a curious intelligence. Anna, a seasoned marine biologist, knew that sharks were often more curious than aggressive, but the proximity of this apex predator tested her resolve. The shark accelerated without warning, its powerful body slammed against the cage. The impact was jarring, sending a shockwave through the structure. Anna stumbled but kept her footing, her hands gripping the bars tightly. The cage groaned under the strain, the sound of metal bending a stark reminder of the power these creatures possessed. The crew above, alerted by the commotion, sprang into action. Shouts echoed down to Anna, their urgent tones muffled by the water. The winch whirred to life, slowly raising the cage, but the undeterred shark struck again. This time, one of the bars bent inward, creating a gap that sent a surge of panic through Anna's veins. She pressed herself against the far side of the cage, her mind racing for solutions. The shark's aggressive behavior was unlike anything she had encountered in her research. It was a stark reminder of the unpredictability of the natural world, even for those who devoted their lives to understanding it. As the cage continued its ascent, Anna's fear was replaced by adrenaline. She realized that her experience, terrifying as it was, offered invaluable insight into shark behavior. Her camera, still in her hands, captured every second, the footage a testament to the raw power of nature. With mere inches to spare, the cage broke the surface, the crew pulling Anna to the boat's safety. Her relief was palpable, her breathing heavy as she recounted the encounter. The crew listened in awe, their expressions a mix of relief and disbelief. Back on shore, Anna's story spread quickly, her footage captivating everyone from fellow scientists to casual observers. It sparked discussions about shark conservation, the ethics of cage diving, and the need to respect the boundaries between humans and wildlife. Anna's encounter became a pivotal moment in her career. It reinforced her commitment to marine conservation, her respect for the creatures she studied deepening in a way she had never anticipated. While harrowing, the attack underscored the importance of coexisting with nature, acknowledging its beauty and dangers. As she shared her experience with the world, Anna's respect for the great whites of Gansbai and all marine life became a central theme in her work. Her story was a powerful reminder of the ocean's mysteries, the need for continued research, and the importance of protecting these magnificent creatures and their habitat for future generations. Azure Bay, nestled on the eastern coast, was a picturesque haven. Golden sands, turquoise waters, and a town rich in tales of sailors and treasures set the backdrop for the Thompson family's summer vacation in 1998. The family, David Thompson, a marine biologist, his wife Clara, a schoolteacher, and their children, 16-year-old Emily and 8-year-old Max, were eager to explore. On their third day, they decided to rent a boat and venture into the deeper waters of the bay. David shared captivating stories about the diverse marine life that inhabited these waters, but he also cautioned them about the occasional sightings of sharks in the area. By noon, they anchored near a vibrant coral reef. As the family snorkeled, Emily, drawn by the allure of the deep, swam farther from the boat. The underwater world was mesmerizing. Colorful corals, darting fish, and the play of light through the water. But this beauty was soon overshadowed by a looming threat. A shadow passed over Emily, and she froze. Circling her were multiple sleek gray forms, sharks. The typically serene inhabitants of Azure Bay appeared unusually agitated. Recalling her father's advice, Emily made an effort to stay composed, refraining from sudden movements. Nevertheless, the sharks continued to grow bolder, inching closer. On the boat, Max's scream alerted the others. David scanned the waters, his heart sinking as he spotted the sharks around Emily. Clara clutched Max, her face pale, 
watching the scene unfold with dread. Emily, trying to control her rising panic, remembered a documentary she'd watched with her father. She began to slowly and deliberately tread water, making herself appear larger, hoping to deter the curious sharks. But one, larger than the rest, began to approach her directly, its intent clear. David, without hesitation, dove into the water, swimming with powerful strokes towards his daughter. David kept Emily close to him, making sure they presented themselves as a single, larger entity in the water. Sharks are more likely to be cautious when approaching larger prey. David also maintained unbroken eye contact with any sharks in the vicinity, signaling to them that he was fully aware of their presence. In response, the large shark, momentarily distracted, veered off course, although the others continued circling. The sun's rays, filtering through the water, created a surreal atmosphere as father and daughter found themselves in a standoff with the pack of sharks. Every movement, every breath was crucial. The tension in the water was palpable. David remembered a technique he'd learned during his marine studies as he tried to form a plan. He began to splash and create commotion, drawing the shark's attention to him and away from Emily. The gamble was risky, but it was their best chance. Emily seized the opportunity, swimming with all her might towards the boat. Clara, seeing her approach, reached out, pulling her aboard. But David was still in the water, leading the sharks away. The family's ordeal was far from over, and as the boat's engine roared to life, the true test of their courage and unity was just beginning. As Emily struggled onto the boat, gasping for breath, Clara enveloped her in a tight, tearful embrace. Max clung to his sister's side, his young eyes filled with a blend of fear and relief. However, their reunion was fleeting, as David remained in the water, intentionally drawing the attention of the sharks with his diversionary tactics. The boat's engine roared to life as Clara steered it closer to David, trying to create a barrier between him and the sharks. The large shark, seemingly the leader, was relentless, tailing David with a predatory focus. The azure waters of the bay, usually a symbol of tranquility, now churned with tension and danger. Using his knowledge of marine behavior, David dove deeper, then suddenly changed direction, trying to confuse the predators. He reached into his pocket, pulling out a small device he always carried, a sonic repeller. Designed to emit frequencies unpleasant to sharks, it was his last hope. Upon activating the device, a piercing, high-pitched sound resonated through the water. The sharks, disoriented by the unexpected noise, started to scatter in different directions. Seizing the moment, David swam upwards, breaking the surface and gasping for air. Clara, with Max's help, extended an oar towards him. Grasping it firmly, David was pulled aboard, exhausted but alive. The family huddled together, the boat speeding back to the safety of the shore. The azure horizon, which had promised a day of adventure and exploration, now bore witness to their harrowing ordeal. Back on the sandy shores of Azure Bay, the Thompsons were met with a crowd of locals and tourists, having been alerted by the flare David had fired earlier. The local lifeguard team and some fishermen approached, offering blankets and warm drinks. The family's vacation had taken an unexpected turn, but it also brought them closer than ever. They realized the strength of their bond and the lengths they would go to protect one another. As their vacation came to an end, the Thompsons left Azure Bay with mixed emotions. The beauty of the place was undeniable, but the memories of that fateful day would forever be etched in their minds. Years later, Emily, inspired by her father and their shared experience, became a marine biologist herself. She returned to Azure Bay, dedicating her life to studying sharks and advocating for their conservation. Through her efforts, the town established a marine sanctuary, ensuring that future generations could experience the wonders of the bay safely. The story of the Thompsons' encounter with the sharks became a legend in Azure Bay. It served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of the sea and the importance of respecting its inhabitants. But above all, it was a testament to the indomitable human spirit and the bonds of family. And so, as the sun set on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the tranquil waters of Azure Bay, the legacy of the Thompson family lived on, a beacon of hope and unity in the face of adversity. Lucas Bennett embarked on a night diving adventure in the warm tropical waters off the coast of Hawaii, USA. It was the summer of 2023, and Lucas, a university student majoring in marine biology, was on a research trip. 
His objective was to study the nocturnal behavior of marine life around the coral reefs, a task that filled him with both excitement and a hint of apprehension. Lucas had always been fascinated by the ocean, its vast mysteries and colorful inhabitants captivating his imagination since he was a child. This dive was not just another academic endeavor but a personal challenge, a step closer to understanding the depths that had always been called to him. Equipped with his diving gear and a waterproof flashlight, Lucas slipped into the calm, moonlit sea from the small boat he had rented. His friend and fellow researcher, Zoe Carter, stayed on board, monitoring his progress and ready to assist if needed. The plan was simple. Lucas would explore the reef close to their anchored position, documenting his findings with a waterproof camera. As Lucas descended into the underwater world, the vibrant colors of the coral reef came alive under the beam of his flashlight. Fish of various shapes and sizes darted in and out of the coral, their scales reflecting the light in mesmerizing patterns. Lucas felt a surge of awe and respect for the delicate ecosystem surrounding him. He moved carefully, mindful of his every breath and the gentle sway of the water. His heart raced with excitement as he spotted a rare species of octopus, its tentacles gracefully moving along the seafloor. Capturing this moment with his camera, Lucas knew this dive would provide invaluable data for his research. However, the tranquility of the dive took a sudden terrifying turn. A swift and silent shadow emerged from the depths, catching Lucas off guard. It was a shark, its sleek form cutting through the water with incredible speed. Lucas's initial fascination quickly turned to fear as the shark circled closer, its eyes reflecting a primal hunger. Watching from the boat, Zoe grew concerned as Lucas's light flickered erratically. She called out to him through their communication device, her voice laced with urgency. Lucas responded, his voice trembling, informing her of the shark's presence. The situation escalated rapidly. Lucas attempted to remain calm, recalling his training on how to deal with shark encounters. He knew sudden movements could provoke an attack, so he tried to keep still. His flashlight aimed at the shark, hoping to deter it with the light. Back on the boat, Zoe realized the gravity of the situation. She knew she had to act fast. She quickly radioed for help, providing their coordinates and explaining the emergency. Meanwhile, she prepared the rescue equipment, her mind racing with worry for her friend below. As Lucas floated in the water, the shark's movements became more aggressive, its sleek body brushing against him in a terrifying dance of predator and prey. Lucas's heart pounded in his chest, his breaths quick and shallow. He knew he was in a fight for his life the dark waters around him suddenly feeling like a vast, inescapable prison. As the tension beneath the Hawaiian night sky escalated, Lucas Bennett found himself in a dire struggle for survival. Undeterred by his attempts to keep calm and still, the shark launched a sudden, aggressive attack. In a flash of movement, Lucas felt a sharp pain in his leg, a stark reminder of his real danger in the depths. The injury, though not life-threatening, was severe enough to hamper his ability to swim and increase the urgency of the situation manifold. Above the surface, Zoe Carter was in a state of near panic. The distress call she had sent out was a beacon of hope, but her friend's chances seemed to dim with each passing second. She paced the small boat's deck, straining her eyes in the darkness for any sign of Lucas or the rescue team. The only sounds were the gentle lap of the waves against the hull and her ragged breaths. Back underwater, Lucas knew he had to make a decision. With his leg injured and the shark still nearby, waiting passively was no longer an option. Using his remaining strength and trying to ignore the throbbing pain, he began a slow, deliberate ascent to the surface. Each movement was calculated to avoid attracting further attention from the shark, but the ascent felt agonizingly slow. Meanwhile, the rescue team, alerted by Zoe's call, was on its way. The local Coast Guard, experienced in handling such emergencies, navigated their vessel through the night waters with practiced ease. Their boat was equipped with powerful searchlights, cutting through the darkness in search of Lucas and Zoe. Zoe's relief was palpable when the searchlight beam finally swept over their boat. She waved frantically, guiding the rescue team to their location. The team worked quickly, deploying divers into the water to assist Lucas and keep the shark at bay. Lucas, now just below the surface, could see the lights from the rescue boat and felt a surge of hope. The divers reached him swiftly, assessed his condition, and provided immediate first aid for his injury. With their support, Lucas was carefully lifted onto a stretcher and brought aboard the rescue boat. 
The return to shore was a blur of activity. Lucas, lying on the deck, his leg bandaged, felt relief and disbelief. Zoe stayed by his side, her presence comforting in the chaos. The Coast Guard provided them with blankets and warm drinks, trying to ease the shock of their ordeal. Once on land, Lucas was taken to a local hospital for treatment. His injury, while painful, was not as severe as initially feared. He would recover, but the experience had left an indelible mark on him. The attack, the fear, and the rescue would remain vivid memories, a reminder of the unpredictable nature of the sea. As Lucas recuperated, he often found himself gazing out at the ocean, its vastness holding a new meaning. The experience had not dampened his love for marine biology, but it had taught him a profound respect for the power and unpredictability of the natural world. The Hawaiian night dive was a chapter in his life he would never forget, a story of survival under the stars. In 2007, the moonlight lit Bayfield Island's calm waters as the sapphire star gently floated on the horizon. A young marine researcher named Isabella Bella Rivera waited at the vessel's bow, her eyes brimming with joy. Next to her was her daring and capable sailing companion, Alexander Alex Donovan, who had been her best friend for many years. Bella voiced her excitement, stating that she couldn't believe they were going to investigate the secrets of Bayfield Island and she went on to explain why. Alex grinned as he responded and mentioned that it would be an experience that they would never forget. Captain Jeremiah Jerry Blackwood of the Sapphire Star joined them and remarked that they were ready for the adventure of a lifetime, comparing their appearance to that of excited children on Christmas morning. Professor Victoria Vicki Thornton, a well-known marine archaeologist, guided their expedition to discover the ocean's mysteries. When the yacht stopped near the island, Vicky invited everyone on board to join her on the deck and welcomed them, recounting the belief that Bayfield Island was protected by a legendary shark so large that it could consume a whale. Bella's eyes expanded with curiosity when she questioned the idea in such tales. She was intrigued. Vicky laughed and reassured them that stories frequently had a kernel of truth, which was precisely what they were looking for and why they were there in the first place. She cautioned them to exercise extreme caution because the waters were treacherous and alluring. Bella and her friends geared up for their dive with excited anticipation as they gathered their research materials and put on their scuba gear. They descended into the abyss, which opened their eyes to the marvels beneath the ocean's surface, such as thriving coral reefs and a wide variety of marine life. As the days passed into nights, Bella became increasingly enthralled by the story of the legendary shark. She noticed patterns in the sightings of the shark that suggested it had a more profound relationship with the island. Bella and Alex decided to investigate a spooky cave that had been on their minds for a while. They did so when the sun was setting. They entered and found an ancient cave with engravings depicting a fabled shark guarding the island. Bella was amazed by the sculptures and remarked that it appeared as though the shark was a protector of something important to the island's heritage. Alex nodded in agreement and observed that whatever it was, it carried a significant amount of importance. During this time, Captain Jerry and Professor Vicky were busy studying their research data to understand the shark's behavior better and to determine whether or not there was a connection between the shark and the island's history of piracy. As the mission went on, an uneasy feeling began to spread across the group. Rumors that the shark was nearby stoked excitement and anxiety in the crew members. Her desire propelled Bella forward, but she couldn't ignore the nagging feeling that the legendary creature was following their every step. When Bella and Alex were scuba diving one fatal night near a shipwreck, the great white shark suddenly materialized in front of them, creating an eerie shadow with its gigantic size. As she peered at the magnificent yet menacing creature, Bella's pulse raced as it raced faster and faster. Alex hushed them that they ought to return to the yacht, his gaze fixed on the shark the entire time. Despite this, Bella found herself pulled to the creature's stare and had the distinct impression that she was privy to something that transcended the passage of time. She concluded that the shark was not the monstrous creature represented in various traditions. As the journey drew to a close, Bella made a decision that surprised everyone. She concluded that it was best to keep some mysteries a mystery and decided to keep the shark's secret a secret. She was aware that most people wouldn't get her reasoning, 
but she couldn't stand by and let the legendary beast be turned into another story used for amusement. After completing their task, Bella, Alex, Vicky, and Jerry sailed away from Bayfield Island. They took memories that would last a lifetime and a greater respect for the wild and unfathomable ocean secrets. As a result, the tale of the enormous shark continued to be kept a secret beneath the water's surface by the very island it defended. It turned into a story passed down from sailor to sailor, a tribute to the untamed wonders beyond the depths waiting to be uncovered by those courageous enough to pursue the truth. Bella's life has been irrevocably altered as a result of the journey. Her curiosity about aquatic life and her admiration for the mysterious creature increased as time passed. Bella carried on with her investigation while holding the recollections of Bayfield Island dear to her heart. After some time, Bella became a well-respected marine researcher famous for her pioneering work in shark protection. She would never forget the look of mesmerization on the shark's face she had experienced on that terrible night. In her imagination, the story of the enormous shark continued to exist as a constant reminder of the wild beauty of the ocean. Alex followed his interest in sailing and eventually became a well-known captain with a profound love for the ocean. He often thought back to their journey to Bayfield Island, cherishing the memories of his time spent with Bella and the secret they had solved together during their time there. The stories of the mythical shark that had become a part of nautical tradition served as Captain Jerry's navigational compass as he continued his voyages across the oceans. He entertained his crew with stories of the mysterious creature, ensuring the tale would be remembered for a long time. Professor Vicky, whose heart was filled with appreciation for the trip of a lifetime, decided to commit to educating future generations about the significance of protecting marine life and appreciating the untamed ocean secrets. She did this with the full knowledge that she would never forget the expedition. The tale of the enormous shark continued to captivate seafarers and explorers alike, motivating them to explore the great unknown while maintaining a sense of awe and respect for the marine life that made the ocean their home. The fact that Bella had found evidence of the legendary shark remained a closely guarded secret as the years passed. She knew that certain enigmas should be preserved in their unsolved state, since this would enable nature to keep its mysterious charm. The world may need to learn the truth about the gigantic shark. Still, for Bella, Alex, Vicky, and Jerry, the experience will remain a treasured memory permanently inscribed into their life's annals. As a result, the unconquerable mysteries of the ocean remained, calling out to the exploratory spirits among us to discover and decipher their hidden meanings. The story of the enormous shark would always serve as a reminder to Bella that marvels were designed to be kept firmly rooted in the domain of fantasy. This was where the line separating truth and myth was hazy, making way for aspirations to soar in the vastness of the vast ocean. Magdalene had always been a hard worker. She grew up in a small town in the Midwest, where her parents instilled in her the value of a strong work ethic. When she graduated from high school, she immediately started working at a local factory, putting in long hours and saving every penny she could. As she got older, Magdalene began to dream of something more. She wanted to travel the world, experience new cultures, and live life on her own terms. But she knew that in order to do that, she would need to save up a substantial amount of money. So she set her sights on a career in finance. She went back to school at night while working full-time during the day and eventually earned a degree in accounting. With her new skills and knowledge, Magdalene landed a job at a large financial firm in the city. For the next 25 years, Magdalene dedicated herself to her job. She worked tirelessly, climbing the corporate ladder and earning promotions along the way. She saved as much money as she could, always keeping her eye on the prize of an early retirement. Despite her success in her career, Magdalene never lost sight of her dreams. She spent every spare moment planning and researching her future travels, making sure that she'd be able to experience everything she had ever wanted to see and do. Finally, at the age of 43, Magdalene decided it was time to retire. She had saved enough money to support herself for the rest of her life, and she was ready to start living her dream. Magdalene sold her house, bought a small RV, and set out on the road. Over the next few years, she traveled all over the United States, visiting national parks, historical landmarks, and small towns. 
She met new people, tried new foods, and saw things she had never imagined. As she traveled, Magdalene realized that she had made the right decision in retiring early. She was finally able to live the life she had always dreamed of, and she was grateful for every moment. One day, as Magdalene was driving along the coast, she came across a small beach town that caught her eye. It was a picturesque place with quaint little shops and cafes lining the streets and a long sandy beach stretching out in front of her. Magdalene knew she had to stop and explore. She parked the RV in a nearby campground and spent the next few days wandering around the town. She met some friendly locals who showed her their favorite spots, including a hidden cove that was only accessible at low tide. Magdalene spent hours sitting on the beach, watching the waves crash against the shore and feeling the sun on her face. As she walked through the town, Magdalene couldn't help but notice how relaxed everyone seemed. People strolled along the streets, stopping to chat with each other or sit at outdoor tables and enjoy a coffee or a snack. There was a sense of peace and contentment in the air that was infectious. Magdalene found herself drawn to the idea of settling down in this little town. She had been on the road for years now, and while she loved the freedom and adventure of traveling, she was starting to feel a little bit lonely. She missed having a community of people around her, and she longed for a place to call home. After some thought, Magdalene decided to take the plunge. She found a small cottage for sale on a quiet street just a few blocks from the beach, and she decided to buy it. She spent the next few months fixing it up, adding her own personal touches and making it feel like home. Magdalene spent her days exploring the town and getting to know her neighbors. She went on long walks on the beach and learned how to drive a boat. One evening, Magdalene decided to take her small boat out to sea and spend the night sleeping on the waves. It was a clear night, with a full moon casting a soft glow over the water. She lay down in the boat and listened to the sound of the waves lapping against the side. As she drifted off to sleep to the sound of the gentle lapping of the waves against the hull of the boat, Magdalene was startled awake by a sudden jolt. The boat was rocking violently, and she could hear something thrashing in the water nearby. She sat up and peered over the side of the boat, trying to make out what was happening. That's when she saw it. A massive great white shark, easily 15 feet long, was attacking her boat. It had bitten into the side of the boat and was shaking it back and forth, trying to get Magdalene inside. Magdalene tried to stay calm, but her mind was racing. She had heard stories of sharks attacking boats before, and she didn't know what to do. She grabbed a nearby oar and began hitting the shark with all her might, hoping to scare it away. But the shark seemed undeterred, continuing to bite and shake the boat. Magdalene frantically searched for something else to use as a weapon. She remembered that she had a can of bear spray on board, but she wasn't sure if it would be enough to scare off a 15-foot predator. She quickly grabbed it and aimed it at the shark's face and sprayed hoping to repel it with a strong scent. To her relief, the spray seemed to do the trick. The shark suddenly released the boat and swam away, disappearing into the darkness. Magdalene sat there for a few minutes, catching her breath and waiting to make sure the shark wasn't coming back. Magdalene breathed a sigh of relief as the shark swam away, but her relief was short-lived. Magdalene thought she was safe, but she was wrong. The shark had disappeared into the darkness, but it had not given up. It circled the boat and came back for a second attack. The shark reappeared, its massive jaws closing in on her arm. Magdalene screamed in terror as the shark clamped down on her arm, dragging her into the water. Pain shot through her body as the shark shook her violently, trying to tear her arm off. Magdalene's mind raced with fear and panic as she desperately fought back, hitting the shark with everything she could find. But the shark was too strong, and Magdalene's efforts seemed to only anger it more. Just when she thought all hope was lost, Magdalene spotted a nearby boat. With all her strength, she managed to break free from the shark's grip and swim towards the boat, yelling for help. The occupants of the boat quickly sprang into action, pulling Magdalene out of the water and taking her to shore. Her arm was badly injured, and she was rushed to the hospital for emergency treatment. Magdalene spent the next few weeks in the hospital, recovering from her injuries. The attack had left her with deep wounds and extensive nerve damage in her arm, making it difficult to move or even hold things. She was devastated to learn that she might not ever fully regain the use of her arm. Despite the setback, 
Magdalene refused to give up on her dream of living in the beach town. She worked tirelessly to rehabilitate her arm, undergoing multiple surgeries and months of physical therapy. Slowly but surely, she began to regain some movement in her arm, but it would never be the same. Magdalene's experience with a shark attack had left her with a newfound appreciation for life. She realized that every moment was precious and should be treasured. She decided to use her experience to inspire others, sharing her story and encouraging people to never give up on their dreams, no matter what obstacles they might face. In the end, Magdalene found that her dream of settling down in a small beach town had come true. Despite the hardships and challenges she had faced, she had found a community of people who welcomed her with open arms and helped her through her recovery. She continued to explore the town and surrounding areas, but now with a newfound appreciation for life and a deeper sense of gratitude for every moment. The picturesque seaside community of Port La Serena was a haven for the well-to-do because of its abundant sunshine and emerald waters, which made it an appealing vacation destination. The opulent yacht Serenity's Grace, which belonged to Olivia Dawson and was anchored in the water off the coast of the Mediterranean Sea on a sultry morning in the summer of 2008, was enjoying the sun's radiance. Olivia had invited Dr. Alexandra Alex Crawford, a well-known marine biologist, to join her and her entourage on a cruise. Olivia's extravagant lifestyle frequently drew the attention of the media, and she wished that the presence of Alex would provide an opportunity to demonstrate her concern for the welfare of marine life and the environment. Alex could not shake the unpleasant feeling that something wasn't right as the yacht cruised leisurely in the distance. Her intuition led her to believe that the waters encircled Port La Serena held mysteries, and she was determined to discover what they were. Olivia's glitzy cocktail parties and her steady stream of distractions prevented Alex from immediately delving into the issue. One night, when the guests were enjoying themselves at a party under the stars, a story began that a woman had vanished after diving off the yacht. It was speculated in hushed tones that the dreaded Serenian predator was responsible for the catastrophe. Alex believed that the story of the monster shark was just a myth perpetuated by the community to lure in tourists. Although the story of the monster shark had been told for decades, she still did not believe it. Alex was motivated to take action as a result of the disappearance. She teamed up with Captain Benjamin Ben Chambers, a seasoned sailor with a profound understanding of the ocean's secrets, and Detective Victor Morales, a seasoned investigator with a flair for uncovering perplexing puzzles. Together, they were able to find the truth about what had happened. They banded together to form an improbable alliance with the common goal of learning the truth about what was going on. During their inquiry, Alex and her team dug into the past of Port La Serena. They found a pattern of inexplicable disappearances stretching back to the 1800s. The stories recalled eerie legends of a huge shark that was claimed to stalk the waterways, taking its prey with deadly accuracy. These tales were said to have been passed down from generation to generation. Alex and her pals unearthed a more sinister reality as they worked through the riddle. The Serenian predator wasn't simply a legendary creature. It was a crafty ruse designed by a cunning and evil group of individuals who utilized the town's terror to cover up their unlawful activities. They used the town's fear to cover up their criminal activities. The disappearances were always seen at the same time as substantial smuggling operations that were being carried out in the region. The perpetrators of the crime employed the urban legend of the Serenian Predator to deflect attention away from their actions by casting the gigantic shark in the offender's role. They went so far as to hire people to dress up as sharks and stage fake attacks to perpetuate the notion further. The people who were behind the lies orchestration opposed Alex, Ben, and Victor after they revealed the truth. The criminals were affluent folks who had a stranglehold over the town's economy and the local media. They were getting closer to the fact that Alex's life was in jeopardy, and their inquiry transformed into a potentially deadly game of cat and mouse. Alex and her team persisted in their mission despite the risks involved. They did this by collecting evidence, documenting the stories of eyewitnesses, and unraveling the web of deceit that the conspirators had built. Olivia Dawson, disillusioned by the dishonesty that surrounded her, 
decided to take the side of the investigators, which exposed the extent of her fragility, although she presented herself as wealthy. The pivotal truth revealed to the village's citizens was an exciting payoff for their tension. The true villains were uncovered and brought to light, and their deception-based empire was brought to its knees. The criminals were made to suffer the repercussions of their acts, which satisfied the need for justice. As the narrative drew close, Portla Serena started recovering from the scars its troubled past left. The town came together to express thanks because Alex, Ben, and Victor demonstrated bravery and tenacity. After Olivia realized her true purpose in life, she vowed to defend the ocean she had previously exploited by donating her fortune to environmental charities and committing to do so. It's possible that the Serenian predator was just a legend. Still, the truth about the dangerous creatures that lurked in the shadows had been uncovered. Thanks to their bravery and tenacity, Alex and her team were able to change the tide, ensuring that the waters of Port La Serena would remain untamed but free from fear. Ultimately, the story was not just about a shark killing a woman after she leaped off her yacht and into the water below. It was a tale of bravery on the part of individuals, the telling of the truth, and the tenacity of a community bound together by a shared desire for justice and redemption. 18-year-old Grace was known for her adventurous spirit and penchant for seeking thrills that made her heart race. She lived on the edge, constantly searching for the next daring escapade. One sunny afternoon, she hatched a plan with her two close friends, Jack and Harry. They would embark on a journey to Aflon Island in Southern California. However, as Grace excitedly shared her plan with her father, his face grew tense with concern. He knew the dangerous reputation of Aflon Island all too well. It was notorious for being a hotspot for great white shark activity, and the dangers that lurked beneath the waves were not to be taken lightly. Grace's father, a man with years of experience behind him, tried to dissuade her from this dangerous adventure. He had seen enough of the world to understand the risks ahead and deeply cared for his daughter's safety. He pleaded with her to reconsider, his voice filled with paternal worry. But Grace, in the way that many adults can be, was filled with youthful arrogance. She brushed off her father's concerns with a dismissive hand wave. To her, the allure of the unknown and the promise of a thrilling adventure were far more appealing than any warnings of danger. She was convinced that she and her friends could handle whatever challenges Aflon Island threw their way. Determined to follow through with her plans, Grace, Jack, and Harry set off for Aflon Island their boat slicing through the calm waters of the Pacific Ocean. The sun hung high, casting a warm and inviting glow over their journey. As they neared the island, the excitement aboard the boat was palpable. The trio had spent weeks meticulously planning their adventure, and they were ready for whatever Aflon Island had in store for them. However, Grace's father couldn't shake the dread that had settled over him. Just as the island appeared on the horizon, a sudden heart-stopping moment shattered the jubilant atmosphere. From the depths below, a shadowy figure emerged, its dorsal fin slicing through the water with menacing grace. It was a great white shark, the apex predator of the sea, and it had zeroed in on their boat. In an instant, the shark lunged forward, its massive jaws snapping shut on the stern of the vessel. The boat shuddered violently as the creature's immense power tore through the fiberglass hull. Panic washed over Grace, Jack, and Harry as they were thrown into the churning waters, their adventure plans replaced by a fight for survival. Back on the mainland, Grace's father's intuition had led him to worry about his daughter's safety. He couldn't ignore the gnawing sense of unease that had settled in his gut since Grace had set out on her ill-fated adventure. Unable to shake off his concerns, he followed them to Aflon Island. Hours later, as he approached the island, a scene of devastation greeted him. The battered remnants of their boat floated on the water's surface and he feared the worst. He scanned the area with a sense of urgency, his heart pounding in his chest. Then in the distance, he spotted a cluster of heads bobbing in the water. His heart sank as he realized that it was Grace, Jack, and Harry struggling to stay afloat amidst the wreckage of their boat. He wasted no time and raced towards them, guided by his fatherly instincts. Pulling alongside the trio, he extended a life-saving hand to each of them, helping them onto his boat. Their battered bodies, coated in seawater and fear, told the story of their harrowing ordeal. 
The great white shark, frustrated and hungry, circled nearby, unable to claim its prey this time. With the adrenaline still coursing through their veins, Grace, Jack, and Harry clung to the boat's safety, their eyes wide with disbelief at their near brush with death. Grace's father knew he had arrived just in the nick of time, and he couldn't help but feel a profound sense of relief. Turning away from the island, they headed back towards the safety of the mainland. A heavy silence marked the journey, the weight of the dangerous adventure they had just escaped hanging in the air. Grace's father spared no words. His stern expression spoke volumes about his concerns. As they disembarked from the boat and set foot on solid ground, Grace's father embraced his daughter tightly, a mixture of relief and reproach in his eyes. He had feared that he might never see her again, and the day's emotions were etched deeply into his face. Though still shaken by the ordeal, the trio of friends couldn't deny the lesson they had learned. The dangers they had faced were not to be taken lightly, and they had narrowly escaped a fate that could have been far more tragic. Grace had failed to heed her father's warnings in her youthful arrogance, which had nearly cost her and her friends dearly. As time passed, Grace reflected on the events of that fateful day. She realized that her father's wisdom had been hard-earned through years of experience and a deep love for his daughter. She understood the importance of listening to those who cared for her and the value of their guidance. The Aflon Island adventure remained etched in their memories as a stark reminder that youthful exuberance should always be tempered with caution and respect for the wisdom of those who had walked the path before. Grace's father had saved them from the jaws of a great white shark and the consequences of their recklessness. On a sunny day in June, Yuri Popov and his son Vladimir decided to enjoy the beautiful beach next to the Dream Beach Hotel in Hergada, Egypt. The beach was buzzing with excitement as locals and tourists splash in the refreshing waters of the Red Sea. Vladimir, a young IT specialist who had moved to Egypt with his family to escape conscription into the army, eagerly joined the swimmers while his father stayed on the sandy shore. Laughter filled the air as children slid down water slides, creating joyful splashes as they landed in the sea. A ladder lured others gently into the water, adding to the fun. The Red Sea Resort was known for its safety in calm waters, making it a popular destination. The beach was carefully monitored by lifeguards, providing reassurance to the visitors. However, little did Vladimir know that this day would turn into a nightmare. As Vladimir swam in the sea, the atmosphere suddenly changed. Shouts of concern filled the air, drawing his attention. He scanned the area, searching for the source of the commotion. It was then that he spotted it, a large dark gray shark with a menacing dorsal fin, cutting through the water like a knife through butter. Fear gripped Vladimir's heart as the shark began circling him, each pass bringing it closer and closer. Panic surged through his veins as he realized he had no time left. While others scrambled to safety, the shark had targeted him. In a split second, it lunged, its powerful jaws clamping around his body, violently thrashing him beneath the surface. Desperate and injured, Vladimir fought for his life. He kicked and struggled, his legs flailing above the water as he desperately tried to free himself. Miraculously, the shark released its grip, and Vladimir resurfaced, gasping for air amidst the chaos. The sea around him turned crimson with his blood, a grim testament to his injuries. Summoning every ounce of strength, Vladimir mustered the courage to swim back to the shore. Each stroke was a battle, his body weakened by the relentless attack. But just as hope flickered in his heart, he noticed the ominous shadow of the shark turning back towards him. It had not finished with him yet. With desperation in his voice, he cried out to his father on the beach, Papa! Papa! His plea for help lingered in the air as the shark closed in once more. Its jaws clamped around his torso, dragging him into the depths of the water. The sea churned and boiled with violence as the shark thrashed, its body breaking the surface again and again, showing no mercy. Yuri, paralyzed by the horror unfolding before him, watched as his son fought for his life, desperately trying to reach the safety of the shore. 
Vladimir's strength waned, his last breaths mingling with the salt water. It was a heart-wrenching scene, a father unable to save his son or reach him in time. As the tragic event unfolded, a lifeguard from a nearby hotel sprang into action. In a race against time, the lifeguard sped towards the scene in a speedboat, but despite their valiant efforts, they arrived mere seconds too late to prevent the tragic outcome. Vladimir's body had vanished, swallowed by the depths of the sea. The beach became a haunting tableau of grief and despair. Yuri and others on the sand were shattered witnesses to the brutal loss of life. Anastasia, Vladimir's girlfriend, had possibly been in the water too, spared from the shark's fury by Vladimir's warning. Another Russian lady, her connection to the family unknown, found solace in the embrace of sympathetic strangers. Eyewitnesses traumatized by the tragic death they had witnessed spoke of a shark that continued to ravage Vladimir's body underwater for what felt like an eternity. The relentless assault lasted for hours, adding to the terror etched into the memories of those who had witnessed the event. In response to the tragedy, authorities initiated a search for the tiger shark responsible for the attack. With the help of the speedboats, they swiftly located the shark still lurking in the area. Capturing it in fishing nets, they dragged the fearsome creature ashore, but the story didn't end there. Filled with rage and a desire for vengeance, men armed with metal bars and wooden sticks descended upon the captured shark. They beat it mercilessly with brutal force until its life was extinguished exacting their own twisted justice for the life that was lost. Local officials, determined to prevent further tragedies, announced a post-mortem examination and investigation into the shark. To ensure the safety of the beachgoers, swimming, snorkeling, and kayaking were temporarily banned in the affected area and nearby locations. Nearly 50 miles of coastline were closed to the public for three agonizing days as authorities took precautions to prevent another tragedy. The incident sent shockwaves through the community and the tourism industry. The safety of the once idyllic waters was now questioned, leaving an indelible mark of fear in the hearts of potential visitors. While time might heal some wounds, the memory of this horrific event would linger casting a shadow over the beautiful resort town of Hergata. In the pristine waters surrounding the Mentawai Islands, Indonesia, a group of friends embarked on a surfing adventure that promised the thrill of riding the unspoiled waves of this secluded paradise. Among them was Jake Thompson, a seasoned surfer with a relentless passion for the sea and its untamed beauty. The Mentawai Islands, known for their crystal clear waters, lush tropical landscapes, and some of the world's most consistent waves were the perfect backdrop for their expedition. The group, filled with excitement and anticipation, set up camp on one of the smaller islands, a spot renowned among surfers for its perfect breaks but far removed from the bustling tourist trails. With his sun-bleached hair and a deep tan, Jake was the first to paddle out into the water, his board cutting smoothly through the waves. His friends watched from the shore, cheering and laughter carrying over the sound of the crashing surf. For Jake, surfing was more than a sport. It was a communion with nature, a dance on the edge of the world. As the day progressed, the group took turns challenging the waves, their skills on full display against the stunning backdrop of the island. The sun hung high in a cloudless sky, its rays reflecting off the water, turning it into a shimmering expanse of blue and green. However, as the afternoon gave way to evening, the mood shifted. Intending to catch one last ride before the day ended, Jake paddled beyond the reef, where the waves broke with more power and intensity. His friends, busy packing up their gear, paid little attention, confident in Jake's abilities. But nature in its beauty holds a power that can turn instantly. As Jake waited for the perfect wave, a dark shape emerged from the depths, its movement swift and purposeful. A shark, drawn by the activity in the water, had ventured closer to the surf. The attack, when it came, was swift and brutal. Jake felt a sudden sharp pain in his leg, a force that pulled him under, away from the safety of his board. The shock of the cold water and the realization of what was happening sent a surge of adrenaline through his body. 
He fought to break free, his mind racing with thoughts of his friends, family, and the life he cherished. On the shore, his friends, now aware of the struggle in the water, sprang into action. Panic set in as they realized the gravity of the situation. Their friend and companion were caught in a life-threatening ordeal with no immediate help in sight. As the golden hues of the setting sun bathed the Mentawai Islands in a soft light, the serenity of the evening stood in stark contrast to the chaos unfolding in the water. Jake's friends, realizing the severity of his situation, scrambled to launch a rescue effort from the shore. Max, the quickest thinker among them, grabbed a couple of surfboards, urging the others to follow him into the water, forming an impromptu rescue team. The ocean, their playground just hours before, now seemed like an immense, unpredictable adversary. As they paddled out, the sight that greeted them intensified their fear. Jake, pale and weakened from the struggle, was clinging to his board, his leg bleeding profusely. Working together with a sense of urgency born out of sheer desperation, they stabilized Jake on one of the boards and began the painstaking journey back to shore. Every stroke through the water was laden with fear, and the heavy realization of how close they were to losing their friend. Once ashore, the gravity of Jake's injury became fully apparent. The bite was deep, and the loss of blood was significant. The group felt an overwhelming sense of helplessness with no immediate medical facilities on the secluded island and the nearest help hours away. Sarah, who had some basic first aid training, sprang into the challenge of getting Jake the medical attention he needed, as best as she could trying to stem the bleeding until they could get professional help. The challenge of getting Jake the medical attention he needed was daunting. The island's isolation, a feature that had made their surfing trip so appealing, now became their biggest hurdle. The group knew they had to act fast with no cell service, and the only satellite phone back at their main camp on a neighboring island. Determined not to let their friend down, Max and another friend, Liam, decided to make the risky journey back to the main camp under cover of darkness, paddling vigorously across the open water with the hope of bringing back the satellite phone and calling for emergency assistance. Back at the beach, under the starlit sky, Sarah and the others stayed by Jake's side, offering words of comfort and doing their best to keep him awake and alert. The camaraderie and bond they shared as friends were now a lifeline, each drawing strength from the other in the face of adversity. Meanwhile, Max and Liam's paddle back to the main camp was a race against time, fueled by adrenaline and the urgent need to save their friend. Upon reaching the camp, they frantically searched for the satellite phone, their hands shaking as they dialed the emergency services, conveying the severity of the situation in hurried, anxious tones. The wait for help was agonizing. The group huddled together, keeping a vigilant watch over Jake, whose condition was stabilizing but still critical. The sound of a distant helicopter, the first sign of the rescue team's approach, was the sweetest sound they had ever heard. Relief washed over them in waves as the helicopter landed on the beach, its blades whipping the air, and trained medical personnel rushed to Jake's side. The rescue operation was swift and efficient. Jake was stabilized further and then airlifted to the nearest hospital, receiving the medical attention he desperately needed. The ordeal had brought the group closer together their bond strengthened by the harrowing experience they had shared. In the following weeks, Jake's recovery became a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the strength of friendship. The surfing trip to the Mentawai Islands, envisioned as an adventure in paradise, had turned into a life-altering experience for each of them, a reminder of the unpredictability of nature and the preciousness of life. As Jake healed, the group made a pact to return to the waves, but with a newfound respect for the ocean and its inhabitants. Their story, a dramatic tale of survival, adventure, and the unbreakable bond of friendship became a source of inspiration, a reminder that hope and the human spirit can prevail even in dire circumstances. In the coastal town of Wavecrest, the pristine Golden Sands Bay was a surfer's dream. Its consistent waves, azure waters, and sun-kissed beaches drew enthusiasts from all corners. The year was 1998, and the Wavecrest Surfing Championship was the most awaited event of the summer. Among the participants was 16-year-old Mia Bennett, a prodigy in the surfing community. Mia epitomized the surfer spirit with her sun-bleached hair, bronze skin, and fearless demeanor. Her family, comprising her parents, Jake and Lila, and her younger brother, Lucas, 
were her pillars of strength. They had journeyed with her to Wavecrest, setting up camp close to the beach to root for her. The championship's inaugural day was radiant and promising. The beach hummed with anticipation, the scent of the sea permeating the air and the rhythmic sound of waves setting the backdrop. After her preparatory rituals, Mia waxed her surfboard, gearing up for her performance. As she ventured into the waves, onlookers watched with high expectations. Mia's prowess was well known, and many pegged her as the favorite for the crown. Patiently, she awaited the ideal wave, her focus unwavering. When the opportune wave approached, Mia showcased her expertise, pulling off intricate moves that garnered applause from the shore. However, as her performance neared its climax, an unexpected disturbance in the water disrupted her flow. Emerging from the ocean's depths, a group of sharks attracted by the commotion closed in. The audience stared, frozen in disbelief, as the sharks encircled Mia. In a heart-stopping moment, a shark attacked, its jaws seizing Mia's leg. The sheer force toppled her from her board, and the tranquil waters of Golden Sands Bay were tainted with red. Jake and Lila, gripped by terror, could only watch their daughter's ordeal. Lucas, driven by adrenaline, commandeered a nearby jet ski, speeding towards Mia. The jet ski's noise and motion momentarily confused the sharks, granting Lucas a brief chance to rescue Mia. With Mia injured but safe on the jet ski, Lucas raced back to land. The gathered crowd, recovering from the shock, mobilized. Medical teams attended to Mia while others consoled the distraught Bennett family. The championship was promptly suspended and the beach was evacuated. The festive ambiance of Golden Sands Bay had been overshadowed by the day's grim events, underscoring the unpredictability of nature. As first responders whisked Mia to the nearest hospital, the Bennett family united in their concern, their summer in Wavecrest taking an unforeseen and harrowing turn. The days following the shark attack were a whirlwind for the Bennett family. Mia's condition was stabilized, but the trauma of the incident lingered. The town of Wavecrest, known for its close-knit community, rallied around the family, offering support and prayers for Mia's swift recovery. In the hospital, Mia's fighting spirit shone through. The bite on her leg required surgery and intensive physiotherapy. Every day was a battle, but with her family's unconditional love and support and her own determination, Mia made remarkable progress. Lucas, in particular, spent hours by her side, recounting tales of their childhood adventures and planning future escapades. News of Mia's resilience spread throughout Wavecrest, turning her into a beacon of hope and inspiration. The organizers of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship, recognizing the significance of Mia's journey, decided to reschedule the event in her honor. Two months after the incident, with Mia's leg healed and her spirit unbroken, the championship was announced. The beach was abuzz once more, but the atmosphere was charged with anticipation and respect for Mia's invincible spirit this time. On the day of the competition, Golden Sands Bay was a spectacle of colors and excitement. Flags fluttered in the breeze and the crowd, larger than before, waited with bated breath. The star attraction was Mia, donning a custom-made wetsuit that proudly displayed a shark emblem. Her first foray into the waves was met with thunderous applause. Every eye was on Mia as she danced on the waves, her moves fluid and confident. The memory of the attack seemed to fuel her. Each wave conquered a testament to her resilience. As the competition progressed, it became evident that Mia was in her element. Her performance was a blend of skill, grace, and sheer willpower. The other participants, recognizing the gravity of her journey, displayed sportsmanship of the highest order, cheering her on. The final round was a spectacle in itself. Mia chose the biggest wave, riding it with a finesse that left the audience in awe. As she completed her run, the beach erupted in cheers, and many were moved to tears by her triumphant return. When the results were announced, it was no surprise that Mia Bennett was crowned the champion of the Wavecrest Surfing Championship. The trophy in her hand was not just a symbol of her surfing prowess, but a testament to her journey of recovery and determination. The day culminated in a grand celebration. The Bennett family was at the heart of it, their joy and relief evident. Jake and Lila, overwhelmed with pride, hugged their children, their bond stronger than ever. With a twinkle in his eye, Lucas whispered plans for their next adventure, eliciting a chuckle from Mia. 
Mia stood at the water's edge as the sun set on Golden Sands Bay, her silhouette against the fiery horizon. Once a source of trauma, the waves now whispered promises of endless adventures. The story of Mia Bennett, the girl who faced down a pack of sharks and emerged victorious, became the stuff of legends in Wavecrest. It was a tale of courage, resilience, and the indomitable human spirit, inspiring generations to come. Lucy Miller, an 18-year-old host and producer of the renowned survival show Wild Survival, had embarked on a daring new adventure. She had chosen an abandoned island off the coast of South Africa as her latest destination. Accompanying her on this difficult journey was her trusted cameraman, Jeff Turner. As they set sail towards the mysterious Saros Island, excitement coursed through Lucy's veins. She was known for her fearless spirit and unyielding determination to bring her viewers the most thrilling and authentic survival experiences. But today, they were about to encounter a challenge that would push their limits like never before. The boat cut through the deep blue waters, and the anticipation in the air was palpable. Lucy and Jeff prepared their equipment, ensuring every camera and survival gear was in top condition. They knew that success in the wild hinged on their preparedness and they took their responsibilities seriously. But as the island loomed in the distance, a sudden heart-stopping moment shattered their calm. A massive, shadowy form emerged from the ocean's depths, its dorsal fins slicing through the water. It was a great white shark, an apex predator of the sea, and it had locked onto their boat. In a horrifying instant, the shark lunged, its jaws snapping shut on the stern of their vessel. The boat shuddered under the immense force of the attack. And before they could react, it was torn asunder. Lucy and Jeff were thrown into the churning waters, their survival instincts kicking in as they struggled to stay afloat. The Great White circled ominously, an ancient predator driven by primal instincts. Lucy and Jeff knew they were now in a battle for their lives. They had to find a way to escape the relentless jaws of the shark and make it to the safety of Saros Island, still 700 meters away. With adrenaline pumping, they scanned the water for any sign of the shark's approach. Lucy grabbed a piece of debris from the wreckage and used it to fend off the shark as it closed in, its menacing eyes fixed on its prey. Meanwhile, Jeff reached for a survival buoy and clung to it, ready to support Lucy. The minutes felt like hours as they fought off the shark, their hearts pounding in their chests. With every swing of the makeshift weapon, Lucy pushed the predator back, buying them precious moments of respite but the shark's determination was unwavering, and it continued its relentless pursuit. As Lucy and Jeff pushed onward, the distance to Saros Island seemed impossibly far. Every stroke of their arms and kick of their legs took them closer, but the shark's presence was a constant reminder of the danger that lurked beneath. They could feel the exhaustion setting in, but they couldn't afford to give in to fatigue. Finally, after what felt like an eternity of struggle, they reached the shores of Saros Island. Their bodies ached from the ordeal and were covered in sweat and seawater. With the last reserves of their strength, they pulled themselves onto the sandy beach and collapsed, gasping for breath. Their immediate relief was short-lived, though. They knew they needed help, and quickly. Lucy reached for her emergency radio and called for assistance, providing their coordinates and the dire situation. They could only wait now, hoping help would arrive in time. Three agonizing hours passed, during which they watched the waters, half expecting the great white shark to return. The sun beat down on them, intensifying their thirst and exhaustion. But they couldn't let their guard down. Survival was still at stake. Then, on the distant horizon, they spotted the reassuring sight of a rescue boat approaching. Lucy and Jeff felt it as a welcome beacon of hope. Relief washes over them. They waved frantically to signal their rescuers and helped each other to their feet, eager to put the harrowing ordeal behind them. As the rescue team reached the shore, they extended a helping hand to Lucy and Jeff, pulling them aboard the boat. Safe at last, they exchanged glances of gratitude and relief with their rescuers. The great white shark, defeated and frustrated, circled in the distance, unable to claim its prey. Lucy Miller and Jeff Turner had faced the ultimate test of survival and they had emerged victorious. Their unwavering determination and quick thinking had seen them through the relentless attacks of the great white shark. They had paddled 700 meters to reach the safety of Saros Island, 
and their distress call had been answered. A profound sense of gratitude and reflection marked the journey back to civilization. Lucy knew she had pushed herself to the limits, and this experience would forever be etched in her memory. Jeff, the cameraman who had been her steadfast companion throughout, had displayed remarkable courage and resilience. When they finally arrived back on the mainland, they were met with a flurry of reporters and well-wishers. Lucy's survival story captured the world's attention, and she was hailed as a true adventurer and survivor. But for her and Jeff, they had made it together, a testament to their unwavering bond and unyielding spirit. As the days passed, Lucy Miller continued to host and produce Wild Survival, bringing her viewers thrilling and authentic experiences from the world's most challenging environments. But the adventure on Saros Island had taught her a valuable lesson, that the wild could be unforgiving and survival was never guaranteed. Yet anything was possible with determination, resourcefulness, and a will to overcome the odds. Vivian Dotson, a 41-year-old mother from New South Wales, Australia, was enjoying a summer vacation at the picturesque Bondi Beach with her husband Rudolph and their children. The family was filled with excitement as they arrived, marveling at the breathtaking scene before them. Bondi Beach stretched out like a dazzling paradise. The sand, as white as snow, caressed their feet as they strolled along the shoreline. The azure waves crashed gently, painting the air with a mist of salty freshness. The sun glowed over the beach, illuminating the colorful umbrellas dotting the sandy expanse. Vivian and her family reveled in the blissful atmosphere. They splashed and swam in the inviting waters, experiencing sheer joy as the waves embraced them. The children's laughter filled the air as they joyfully built sandcastles, their imaginations taking them to enchanted kingdoms. Meanwhile, after completing their task, Rudolph shared his plan with Vivian to rent a small boat and venture out into the nearby waters. Vivian, longing for a chance to reconnect with her husband, eagerly expressed her desire to join him on the adventure. Entrusting their eldest son, Liam, with the care of his younger brother, Lance, they quickly secured a small boat propelled by a tiny engine. As they embarked on their maritime journey, the couple immersed themselves in mirth and lighthearted banner. The boat carried them further into the sea, effortlessly slicing through the serene waters. A gentle breeze tousled their hair, whispering secrets of the ocean in their ears. The serene ambiance enveloped Vivian, and a sense of tranquility settled upon her weary form. She decided to rest, reclining on her back, using a life vest as a makeshift pillow. Her feet dangled over the side of the boat, toes playfully dipping in the water's cool embrace. In an instant, the idyllic setting shattered. A thunderous splash jolted Rudolph's attention, his heart pounding with a foreboding sense of dread. He spun around, searching for Vivian, only to find her inexplicably missing. His gaze shifted to the nearby water, and his worst fears were confirmed. Vivian fought desperately to stay afloat, her face etched with sheer terror, her screams rending the once peaceful air. Rudolph's mind raced, desperately trying to make sense of the horrifying sight before him. It became painfully apparent that a creature was attacking his beloved wife. Without a second thought, Rudolph sprang into action, propelled by love and instinct. Armed with a utility knife strapped to his leg, he hurled himself into the water, determined to confront the threat that had befallen Vivian. To his horror, he discovered a colossal 17-foot great white shark, its teeth and powerful jaws clamped viciously onto Vivian's leg. Vivian exhibited unwavering bravery as she battled against the unyielding onslaught, desperately fighting to stay afloat amidst the relentless assault. The excruciating pain intensified with each savage bite as the shark's serrated teeth ruthlessly tore into her flesh, mercilessly grinding against bone, fracturing it in a horrifying display. In the face of such terror, Rudolph's adrenaline surged, propelling him forward with unmatched determination. His strokes cut through the water as he swam with all his might, propelled by the purpose of reaching his imperiled wife. As Rudolph drew nearer to the monstrous creature, he was confronted by its sheer enormity, feeling insignificant in comparison. With his heart pounding, he mustered his courage, 
driving the knife forcefully into the shark's coarse, textured skin, penetrating the layers of flesh with determination. Gripping the hilt tightly, he used the blade to propel himself closer to the violently writhing beast, inching nearer to the heart of the dangerous struggle. The shark unleashed a frenzy of violence, violently thrashing his head from side to side, subjecting Vivian to a nightmarish torment of pain and terror. Each bone-jarring movement left her helplessly tossed about like a rag doll, trapped in a harrowing symphony of agony. Yet, despite the overwhelming onslaught, her spirit refused to be broken. With an unyielding resolve, she summoned every ounce of strength. Vivian used her free leg as a weapon, fiercely kicking at the shark's menacing snout, her determination a testament to her indomitable will. Fueled by a desperate mix of fury and love, Rudolph unleashed a barrage of punches and clawed at the shark's vulnerable spots, its face, snouts, gills, and eyes. The couple's combined assault inflicted agony upon the massive predator, causing it to recoil, its grip on Vivian's leg weakening. Seizing the opportunity, Rudolph maneuvered swiftly, pulling Vivian away from the ferocious jaws of the shark. With determination, he hoisted her onto the boat, ensuring the shark didn't return to claim its prey. As the couple escaped the treacherous waters, the true extent of Vivian's injuries became painfully clear. The shark's menacing teeth had ripped through her flesh, leaving a scene of devastation in its wake. The wound spewed crimson, staining the boat's floor as Vivian's blood flowed. In a race against time, Rudolph knew he had to act swiftly to save his wife. He tightly bound Vivian's mangled leg using his shirt and any available clean cloth on the boat, temporarily halting the bleeding. With determination etched on his face, he steered the boat toward the shore, pushing the engine to its limits. Upon reaching land, Vivian was rushed to the nearest hospital, where a team of dedicated doctors worked tirelessly to save her life. The severity of her injuries proved insurmountable, and despite their best efforts, her leg had to be amputated. After three grueling weeks, Vivian emerged from the hospital, her physical and emotional wounds still fresh. But the spirit remained unbroken as she faced the challenges of her new reality with resilience and unwavering determination. With Rudolph by her side, she embarked on a journey of healing and adaptation, their love serving as an unbreakable bond in the face of unimaginable adversity. On a sunny morning on Reunion Island, France, a group of enthusiastic volunteers gathered on the picturesque beach of St. Paul. Among them was Sophie Laurent, a spirited environmental science student from the University of La Réunion. The event was a community-led beach cleanup organized to combat the increasing problem of marine debris affecting the island's stunning coastlines. Sophie, with her long, sun-streaked hair tied back and a determined look in her eyes, was passionate about marine conservation. She had always felt a deep connection to the ocean and was eager to make a tangible difference. Clad in shorts and a t-shirt with sturdy gloves to protect her hands, she listened intently as the coordinator outlined the day's activities. Armed with bags and trash pickers, the volunteers spread out along the shore, their spirits high as they set their tasks. Draft to the water's edge, Sophie began collecting plastic bottles, discarded fishing nets, and other debris washed ashore. The gentle lap of the waves against her ankles and the occasional call of a seabird overhead made the work feel less like a chore and more like a labor of love. As the morning progressed, Sophie moved into the shallows to retrieve a tangle of plastic that seemed to be partially submerged. The clear waters of Reunion Island, usually so inviting, hit an unexpected danger that day. Without warning, a sharp pain erupted in Sophie's ankle, sending a jolt of fear through her. Startled, she stumbled backward, glancing down to see a small shark swimming away, its silhouette disappearing into the deeper water. Though not deep, the bite was bleeding profusely, marring the clear water around her with dark, spreading clouds. Sophie's heart raced as she called out for help the shock of the attack setting in. The other volunteers, hearing her cries, rushed to her side, 
their expressions turning from concern to alarm at the sight of her injury. The beach cleanup ended abruptly as the volunteers rallied around Sophie. One of them, a trained first aider, quickly administered primary treatment, applying pressure to the wound to stem the bleeding. The coordinator, realizing the gravity of the situation, dialed the emergency services, urging them to hurry. As Sophie sat on the sand, surrounded by worried faces, the initial shock gave way to a throbbing pain in her ankle. The community's concern was palpable, their cleanup efforts forgotten in the face of the unfolding emergency. The pristine beach, moments ago a scene of collaborative effort and environmental stewardship, had become the backdrop for a stark reminder of the ocean's unpredictable nature. As the minutes ticked by, the serene beach of St. Paul on Reunion Island transformed into a hub of activity. The distant sound of sirens grew louder, signaling the approach of the emergency medical team. The volunteers formed a makeshift pathway to ease their access to Sophie, who sat quietly, trying to mask the pain with a brave smile. The medical team sprang into action upon arrival, their efficiency a comforting presence amidst the tense atmosphere. They assessed Sophie's injury with professional calm, cleaning the wound and ensuring no severe damage had been done. The bite, though frightening, was fortunately superficial, requiring only stitches and not surgery. The beach cleanup coordinator gathered the volunteers as Sophie was being tended to. The day's events had taken an unexpected turn, and it was clear that the cleanup would have to be postponed. The safety of the participants was paramount, and the shark encounter had raised concerns that needed to be addressed before they could continue their work. The incident sparked a flurry of discussions within the community. Local authorities and marine biologists from the University of La Reunion began investigating the shark's presence in such shallow waters, a rare occurrence that caught everyone off guard. The following community meetings focused on enhancing beach safety and balancing the need for environmental conservation with protecting those who volunteered their time. Sophie's story quickly spread, her bravery and commitment to the cause earning her admiration and respect. Interviews with local media highlighted volunteers' risks and the urgent need for action against marine pollution, indirectly contributing to such wildlife encounters. In the following weeks, Sophie's recovery symbolized the community's resilience. Her experience had not dampened her spirit but strengthened her resolve to advocate for the ocean's protection. She became more involved in educational programs, sharing her story to raise awareness about the importance of safe and responsible conservation efforts. The beach cleanup event was rescheduled with increased safety measures and a renewed sense of purpose. The volunteers returned, their numbers bolstered by Sophie's story, ready to continue their work with a deeper understanding of the ocean's complexities. The incident at St. Paul Beach, while alarming, had brought the community closer together, fostering a collective determination to protect their cherished coastal environment. Once a volunteer, Sophie had become a beacon of inspiration, her encounter with the shark a poignant reminder of the delicate balance between human activity and the natural world. As the story concludes, the beaches of Reunion Island remain a place of breathtaking beauty and vibrant life, a testament to the resilience of its people and its marine inhabitants. The community's commitment to conservation, strengthened by their challenges, ensures that the island's shores remain a haven for all who cherish the ocean and its wonders. Nestled within the Coralina Isles was the lesser-known coastal region of Marlin's Edge. Its untouched beaches and the allure of its underwater mysteries made it a haven for those seeking a unique diving experience. The Harper family, consisting of James, a university professor, Elise, a renowned novelist, their spirited daughter Ava, and their younger son Ethan chose Marlin's Edge for their summer getaway. The family had heard tales of the region's underwater caves and vibrant marine life, and were eager to explore its depths. Upon their arrival, they were captivated by the serene beauty of Marlin's Edge. The gentle sound of waves, the pristine sands, and the distant horizon promised an adventure they wouldn't forget. To make the most of their trip, they enlisted the services of Marlin's Dive Adventures, a local dive center known for its expert guides. The day of the dive was picture perfect. The sun illuminated the clear waters, revealing a hint of the wonders below. With their gear checked and spirits high, the Harpers, accompanied by their dive guide Marco and some of the boat crew, began their underwater journey. The marine world of Marlin's Edge was breathtaking. 
Schools of colorful fish, intricate coral formations, and the play of light created a magical setting. Ava led the group, eager to explore, with Ethan trying to match her enthusiasm. However, the tranquility was soon disrupted. From a distant, shadowy region, a pack of sharks emerged, their presence instantly changing the dynamics of the dive. The Harpers found themselves in a precarious situation as the sharks circled, their intent clear. A sudden movement from one of the sharks saw it heading straight for Ava. Before anyone could react, it came dangerously close, its teeth grazing her leg. A sense of urgency and fear replaced the serene environment. Drawing upon his experience, Marco signaled the group to form a tight cluster. Protective instincts kicking in, James and Elise moved closer to their children, ensuring they remained together. Thinking quickly, Marco reached into his diving belt and retrieved a small canister of shark repellent spray. He was well aware that when released, the cloud of repellent emitted a signal of danger to any sharks in the vicinity, suggesting the possible presence of a predator. This action created a temporary safety zone around them. Using this brief window, the group began their ascent, each moment filled with tension as they hoped to reach the safety of the surface without any further encounters. The ascent to the surface felt like the longest journey the Harpers had ever undertaken. Ava felt the sting from the gash on her leg with each upward kick, a constant reminder of the close encounter. The once clear waters of Marlin's Edge now seemed murky, clouded by fear and uncertainty. The underwater world around them gradually gave way to the shimmering surface as they continued their slow ascent. The family's hearts raced with a mix of relief and anxiety, knowing that their journey wasn't over yet. Marco's decision to use the shark repellent spray had created a temporary buffer, but it was unclear whether the sharks had truly been deterred or if they were lurking nearby. The boat's crew had been watching the situation closely, and they hurriedly extended a ladder into the water to aid their ascent. James, Elise, and Marco helped the children climb the ladder first, ensuring they reached the safety of the boat's deck. Ava, nursing her leg wound, was the last to ascend, her eyes darting nervously between the water and the boat. Once they were all safely aboard, the boat's crew members quickly assessed the situation. They had encountered a school of curious but ultimately cautious sharks, and the repellent had done its job in creating a temporary safe zone. The family received immediate medical attention for Ava's leg wound, which fortunately appeared to be minor. As they motored back to the shore, the family exchanged relieved smiles and solemn reflections. They had experienced a close call with the ocean's apex predators and had emerged from the encounter shaken but unharmed. Marco's quick thinking and the teamwork of the boat's crew had been instrumental in their survival. They debriefed on the shore with the local marine experts, who stressed the importance of respecting the ocean's inhabitants and practicing responsible diving. The Harpers had learned a valuable lesson about the unpredictable nature of the sea and the importance of being prepared and knowledgeable when exploring its depths. The next day, the Harpers decided to cut their trip short but not before making a generous donation to Marlin's Dive Adventures for shark conservation and research. They realized that the ocean, with all its beauty, also held dangers, and understanding these magnificent creatures was the key to coexisting. As they boarded the plane, leaving behind the Coralina Isles and the memories of Marlin's Edge, they carried a story of survival, unity, and the indomitable human spirit. The experience would stay with them as a reminder of the delicate balance of nature and the need to approach the ocean with both awe and caution. In the serene waters of the Great Barrier Reef, Emily Harris and her brother, Michael Harris, embarked on a peaceful fishing trip under the golden Australian sun. The year was 2021, and the siblings had rented a modest boat for a day of tranquility and bonding. They had chosen a secluded spot known among locals for its rich marine life, but untold by any map, far from the bustling tourist trails and closer to nature's untouched beauty. Emily, a schoolteacher from Sydney with a passion for marine biology, was thrilled at the chance to combine her love for teaching and the sea. An amateur photographer, Michael, was equally excited to capture the stunning landscape and vibrant underwater world. The reef, with its myriad colors and bustling aquatic life, was the perfect backdrop for their adventure. As they settled into their spots, the gentle lap of waves against the hull and the distant calls of seabirds set a calm rhythm. 
Emily baited her line with practiced ease, casting it into the clear azure waters. While Michael adjusted his camera settings, eager to document their expedition. The morning passed with the siblings sharing stories and laughs, occasionally reeling in small catches, which they released after admiring the beauty of each fish. The sun climbed higher, painting the sky in brilliant hues of blue, and the water around them sparkled like a sea of diamonds. But as the day wore on, the tranquility of their outing was shattered by an unexpected visitor. A shadow loomed beneath the surface, growing more ominous as it approached their boat. Emily's line tensed suddenly and she braced herself, thinking she had snagged a significant catch. However, the reality was far more startling. Without warning, a massive shark, its mottled gray skin and scars witnessing its battles, breached the water's surface. Its powerful body slammed onto the deck with a thunderous crash, its jaws snapping ferociously. The siblings froze in terror, the shark's dark eyes locking onto theirs, a primal fear gripping their hearts. Emily's mind raced. She knew they were in a precarious position. The boat, barely sturdy enough for their leisurely fishing, now rocked violently under the shark's weight. She glanced at Michael, his face pale, his camera forgotten at his side. Emily formulated a plan based on her knowledge of marine life and a sudden surge of adrenaline. She remembered reading about sharks' sensitivity to touch in certain areas and their reliance on the element of surprise. She shouted to Michael, instructing him to distract the shark with his camera flash while she searched for something to defend themselves with. The confined space of the boat became a battleground. Michael, recovering from his initial shock, began flashing his camera at the shark, its eyes recoiling with each burst of light. Armed with a sturdy fishing rod, Emily aimed for the shark's gills, knowing it was a vulnerable spot. Their struggle was intense, a dance of survival where every move could be their last. The shark thrashed violently, its tail smashing against the boat's sides, threatening to capsize them. Emily and Michael worked in tandem, their fear mixed with a fierce determination to protect each other. As the sun descended toward the horizon, casting long shadows over the water, the siblings found themselves in a precarious stalemate with the beast. With each passing moment, their situation grew more desperate. The shark's relentless energy contrasted with their waning strength. The struggle between Emily, Michael, and the shark intensified as the sun lowered, casting an orange glow over the water. The small boat's once peaceful deck was now chaotic, with fishing gear strewn about and the shark's powerful movements threatening to send them all into the water. Her resolve hardening, Emily knew they couldn't maintain this standoff much longer. Her mind raced for a solution, recalling every knowledge she had about sharks. She remembered a documentary she'd watched, detailing how some sharks, when flipped onto their backs, enter a state of tonic immobility, a temporary paralysis. It was a long shot, but it was their only chance. She shared her plan with Michael in hushed, urgent tones, aware that their window of opportunity was shrinking with the fading light. Michael nodded, understanding the risks but trusting his sister's judgment. They decided that Emily would continue to fend off the shark with the fishing rod, aiming to disorient it, while Michael would use a spare oar to leverage the shark, attempting to flip it over. Sensing their movements, the shark became more aggressive, its tail slamming against the boat with enough force to crack the wooden planks. Water began to seep in, adding another layer of danger to their dire situation. Emily and Michael exchanged a look, understanding the stakes had just risen. Their survival now depended not only on subduing the shark, but also on keeping the boat afloat. In desperation and courage, Emily jabbed the fishing rod towards the shark's gills again, causing it to reel back. Seizing the moment, Michael positioned the oar under the shark's massive body, pushing with all his might. The shark, caught off guard by the unexpected maneuver, flipped onto its back. For a brief moment, it lay still its underbelly exposed to the fading light, its eyes glazed over in tonic immobility. The siblings didn't waste a second. Michael quickly secured the oar to ensure the shark remained in place while Emily grabbed a bucket to start bailing out the water flooding their boat. Their actions were swift and synchronized, born of a lifetime of camaraderie and mutual understanding. As the last rays of the sun vanished below the horizon, the shark began to stir, its immobility wearing off. But by then, Emily and Michael had managed to stabilize the boat and were ready to escape. They carefully navigated around the still-disoriented shark, using their remaining oars to propel the boat towards safety. 
The journey back to shore was tense, with both siblings keeping a vigilant watch over the water. The experience had changed them, the close encounter with the shark leaving a mark on their psyche. They spoke little, each lost in their thoughts, the gravity of their situation sinking in. As they finally reached the safety of the shore under the cover of night, they looked back at the water, the moon reflecting off its surface. The shark was nowhere to be seen, having disappeared into the depths of the Great Barrier Reef. The siblings shared a relieved embrace, thankful for their escape, but forever altered by the ordeal. While terrifying, their harrowing experience brought them closer together, forging a stronger bond than ever. They returned to their lives, Emily to her teaching and Michael to his photography. But the memories of that day remained, a reminder of their survival and the incredible story they had lived to tell. Chasey Franz, her husband Tom, and their daughter Chalisa had embarked on a family adventure to Verotic Island in the rugged wilderness of Alaska. The pristine beauty of the Alaskan wilderness had always held a special allure for them, and they were eager to explore this remote island together. The journey had been tranquil thus far, with the family basking in the serenity of the Alaskan waters as they covered the distance to their destination. The air was crisp, carrying the scent of the sea and the promise of a memorable adventure. Chalisa, their adventurous daughter, was perched on the edge of the boat, her eyes wide with wonder as she gazed at the icy expanse of the ocean. She had always been drawn to the thrill of nature, and this journey was a dream come true for her. Little did they know that their adventure would soon take an unexpected and harrowing turn. As they continued on their course toward Veritic Island, a sudden and violent upheaval shattered the moment's tranquility. Without warning, a massive form emerged from the depths below its dorsal fin slicing through the water with an eerie grace. A great white shark, a formidable sea predator, had locked onto their boat. The shark surged forward, its enormous jaws snapping shut with a horrifying force. Chalisa, sitting at the edge of the boat, was the closest to the predator's reach. In a split second, her world became a frenzy of terror as the great white shark clamped its razor-sharp teeth around her arm. Panic and adrenaline coursed through the boat as the family grappled with the sheer horror of the situation. Chalissa's cries of pain and terror pierced the air as she fought to break free from the grip of the ruthless predator. Blood stained the water, a chilling reminder of their peril. Tom, driven by a father's instinct to protect his child, sprang into action. With adrenaline, he powered the boat forward, the engine roaring to life as he desperately sped towards Verotic Island. The race against time had begun, and Chalisa's life depended on reaching medical help as swiftly as possible. The island, a beacon of hope on the horizon, drew nearer with every passing moment. Chasey, her face etched with worry and determination, clung to her injured daughter, doing her best to keep Chalisa stable and conscious as they raced against the relentless clock. Finally, they reached the shores of Verotic Island, the boat's engine roaring to a halt as they made landfall. Tom's heart pounded in his chest as he leaped from the ship, frantically seeking assistance for Chalisa. He knew that every second counted, and the urgency weighed heavily upon him. The island, though remote, was equipped with a medical station staffed by professionals who were well prepared for emergencies. They rushed to Chalisa's aid, their expertise shining through as they assessed the extent of her injuries. The great white shark's attack left her with a severely injured arm and the immediate focus was stabilizing her condition. Tom stood by his daughter's side, his face etched with relief and worry. Chasey remained close, offering support and comfort to her injured daughter. The medical team worked tirelessly, tending to Chalissa's wounds and doing everything possible to ensure her recovery. Time seemed to blur as the hours passed. Chalissa's injuries were severe, but the medical team's skill and determination prevailed. They managed to stabilize her condition and arrangements were made for her to transfer back to the mainland for further treatment. A pair of marine guards were dispatched to Verotic Island to transport Chalissa and her family back to the mainland. As they boarded the boat, the island's natural beauty seemed bittersweet, a reminder of the adventure that had taken an unexpected and terrifying turn. The journey back to the mainland was marked by a solemn atmosphere. Chalissa, though still in pain, was now in capable hands, and the knowledge that she was receiving the best possible care brought some solace to her family. Tom and Chasey were grateful they had reached Veritic Island when they did, 
as it had undoubtedly saved their daughter's life. Upon their return to the mainland, Chalisa was immediately transferred to a hospital, where a team of skilled surgeons worked diligently to repair her injured arm. The road to recovery would be long and challenging, but Chalisa's resilience and the unwavering support of her family would see her through. As the days turned into weeks, Chalisa's condition gradually improved. She underwent physical therapy to regain the use of her injured arm and received unwavering support from her family every step of the way. The experience had brought them closer, and their love and determination to overcome adversity were more vigorous than ever. The incident on Verotic Island served as a stark reminder of the unpredictable and unforgiving nature of the wild. It was a testament to the bravery of a father who had fought against all odds to protect his daughter, the resilience of a young woman who refused to be defined by her injuries, and the unwavering support of a loving family. Chalissa's journey towards recovery was a testament to the indomitable human spirit, and her family stood by her side, offering love, strength, and unwavering support as they faced the challenges ahead together. In the vibrant city of Cancun, Mexico, known for its crystal-clear waters and thrilling water sports, Ethan Turner, a young and adventurous tourist from Canada, was excited to try parasailing for the first time. The warm, sunny day with a clear blue sky provided the perfect conditions for an unforgettable experience over the Caribbean Sea. Ethan, with his characteristic enthusiasm, listened intently to the safety briefing from the parasailing instructor Carlos. Carlos, a seasoned expert with years of experience, explained the do's and don'ts, ensuring Ethan felt comfortable and secure with the harness and equipment. With a reassuring pat on the back, Carlos signaled the boat captain to start the engine, and soon Ethan was soaring into the air, his parasail billowing brightly against the backdrop of the sun. From his aerial vantage point, Ethan was mesmerized by the panoramic views of Cancun's coastline, the white sandy beaches blending seamlessly into the turquoise waters. The thrill of floating high above, with the wind in his face and the gentle tug of the parasail, was exhilarating. Below him, the water was a tapestry of blues and greens, teeming with life. As Ethan enjoyed his flight, the boat maneuvered through the water, guided by Carlos's experienced hands. The laughter and cheers from other tourists on the boat reached Ethan, adding to the moment's joy. Everything was perfect, an adventure Ethan had dreamed of, a story he couldn't wait to share. However, as the boat took a wide turn, an unexpected gust of wind caught Ethan's parasail, causing a sudden jolt in the line. Ethan's heart raced as he felt himself dropping closer to the water's surface. Carlos and the boat captain worked quickly to stabilize the situation, but before they could regain control, Ethan found himself skimming the water. The touch of the cool water was initially a thrill, an unexpected part of the adventure until a shadow beneath the surface caught Ethan's eye. A giant shark, attracted by the commotion and the unusual presence in its territory, approached with a speed and precision that belied its size. Panic set in as Ethan realized the danger he was in. The serene beauty of the Caribbean Sea had turned into a suspense scene. Carlos shouted instructions from the boat, trying to reassure Ethan and guide him on what to do. But the fear and the wind made it hard to hear. As the shark drew closer, Ethan's mind raced for solutions. He tried to lift his legs to make himself less accessible, but the dip and sway of the parasail made it difficult to control his movements. The boat crew, realizing the gravity of the situation, frantically worked to reel Ethan in but the process was slow and every second felt like an eternity. The tension in the air was palpable as Carlos and the boat crew worked with desperate urgency, their efforts focused on pulling Ethan back to safety. The winch whirred loudly, slowly retracting the line, but the shark, a dark silhouette against the sunlit water, continued its ominous circling, its dorsal fin cutting through the surface like a blade. Suspended between sky and sea, Ethan felt a surge of fear, unlike anything he'd ever experienced. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat echoing the ticking of an unseen clock. Below, the shark's movements became more deliberate, as if it was biding its time, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. On the boat, the atmosphere was frantic. Carlos shouted encouragement, trying to keep Ethan calm, while the captain pushed the engine to its limit, attempting to create distance between Ethan and the shark. The other tourists, once excited spectators, now watched in stunned silence, their cheers replaced by hushed prayers, 
As the winch continued its slow work, Ethan dipped closer to the water with each sway of the parasail. The cool spray of the sea brushed against his skin, starkly contrasting the heat of his fear. He knew he had to keep his legs up to make himself as small a target as possible, but fatigue was setting in, making every movement a struggle. Sensing the vulnerability above, the shark made a sudden, swift approach, its sleek body cutting through the water with terrifying speed. Seeing the shark's advance, Ethan braced himself, his mind racing with images of what might come next. But fate intervened in those critical seconds. Just as the shark neared, a wave more significant than the rest rose, momentarily blocking its path and disrupting its trajectory. The unexpected barrier gave the boat crew the precious time they needed. With a final Herculean effort, they managed to hoist Ethan out of the shark's reach, pulling him back towards the boat at a pace that defied their earlier struggles. Ethan's relief was overwhelming as he felt himself rising away from the water. His breaths came in ragged gasps, a mixture of fear and gratitude filling his chest as he was finally brought aboard. The crew and his fellow tourists erupted into spontaneous applause, their relief as palpable as his own. Back on the boat with solid ground beneath his feet, Ethan collapsed into the arms of Carlos, who clapped him on the back with a mixture of relief and caution. The captain steered them back to shore, the boat cutting through the water with a newfound urgency eager to leave the sight of the near disaster behind. The incident became the talk of Cancun, a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of adventure sports and the ever-present dangers that lurked beneath the waves. Ethan's story, with its dramatic arc from exhilaration to terror and back to safety, was shared far and wide a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the quick thinking of those who had come to his rescue. As Ethan reflected on his experience, the adrenaline of the moment gave way to a deeper appreciation for life's fragility and the unexpected challenges it presented. His brush with danger in the tropical waters of Cancun would stay with him forever, a narrative of survival that he would carry into every future adventure. A reminder that the line between thrill and threat was as thin as the parasail that had taken him into the sky. Lagoon's Edge, a coastal village, was a canvas of tranquility and natural beauty in the summer of 2005. The village, with its charming cobblestone pathways and houses adorned in soft pastel hues, was a sanctuary for those seeking solace in nature's lap. The expansive, gleaming lagoon, which seamlessly kissed the sea, was the jewel of this quaint village. Legends whispered of hidden treasures and mystical creatures beneath its azure surface. The Carter family, consisting of Robert Carter, a seasoned journalist, his wife Lydia, a celebrated photographer, and their spirited 12-year-old daughter Sophie, sought a summer of adventure and inspiration at Lagoon's Edge. They nestled into a cozy cottage that offered a panoramic view of the lagoon, hoping the serene environment would spark their creative energies. One sun-drenched morning, the Carters, along with a few intrigued villagers, embarked on a boat expedition to explore the hidden alcoves of the lagoon. Lagoon's Whisper, captained by the seasoned Captain Elias, whose lineage was deeply intertwined with the village's history, sailed smoothly over the gentle waves. With his weathered face and twinkling eyes, Elias recounted stories of pirates, ancient shipwrecks, and the mythical guardians of the lagoon. Sophie's adventurous spirit was captivated by the legend of Mermaid's Cove, a secluded spot celebrated for its crystal clear waters and rumored to be a favored haunt for mermaids. Elias, his smile filled with knowing, expertly guided the boat toward the cove. Upon reaching Mermaid's Cove, the group was mesmerized by its ethereal beauty and couldn't resist diving into the inviting waters. Sophie, fearless and curious, swam deeper into the cove, enchanted by the vibrant marine life. Suddenly, the tranquility was shattered by the appearance of dark, swift-moving shadows. A pack of sharks encircled Sophie, their piercing eyes locked onto her and their intentions ominously clear. Her heart pounded as she tried to maintain a semblance of calm, floating motionless in the water. Surrounded by the unforgiving depths of the ocean, Sophie found herself in the midst of a heart-stopping moment as a pack of sharks descended upon her. Sensing an opportunity, the powerful predators closed in, their dorsal fins slicing through the water's surface with a sinister grace. Sophie's heart pounded like a drumbeat, her every instinct screaming for her to flee. As she desperately tried to move towards the boat, 
The sharks moved in closer, their cold black eyes fixed on her. One of them lunged, teeth bared, and Sophie felt the rush of terror course through her veins as the shark's jaws snapped shut just inches from her leg. But before the other sharks could inflict further harm, a pair of saviors emerged from the boat. Captain Elias and Robert, driven by remarkable swiftness and courage, thrust at the attacking sharks with a makeshift spear, repelling them with precise, calculated jabs. The pack of sharks, momentarily thrown off balance by the sudden turn of events, retreated, their hunt disrupted. There was no time to spare in the aftermath of the heart-stopping shark encounter. With Sophie's life hanging in the balance, they acted swiftly, rushing her back to the safety of the boat. The adrenaline-fueled race against time continued as they sped toward the shore and called for an emergency medical team. At the hospital, the dedicated medical staff worked tirelessly to stabilize Sophie. She bore the physical scars of the attack, but her spirit remained unbroken. Days turned into weeks as she underwent surgeries and received round-the-clock care. Gradually, with each passing day, Sophie's strength returned. Her indomitable willpower carried her through a challenging recovery, aided by the unwavering support of her family and the ever-present Robert, who refused to leave her side. It was a testament to her resilience that she not only survived the vicious shark attack, but also emerged from it stronger and more determined than ever before. As Sophie's health improved, the Carters and their guides couldn't help but reflect on the fateful day. It had been a difficult journey, one that had tested their courage and forged unbreakable bonds. The memory of the shark encounter would forever remain etched in their minds as a testament to the power of human determination and the strength of the human spirit.